Good afternoon, family. Once again, it's your DC dude. If you are already a subscriber to this channel, I want to welcome you back. However, if you are new to this channel, I recommend that you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can stay in the know about where we're going to go. So right now, family, we find ourselves in Anacostia at the Anacostia Metro Station. Today is about promoting a business that I think is very special to the neighborhood. Uh, as you all know, it's well known that uh, east of the Anacostia River as a whole is known as a food desert, right? There are, there are, there are a limited amount of grocery stores. Um, there are a limited amount of dine-in restaurants. But even more importantly, there are a limited amount of places where you can buy good, fresh, healthy food choices. So today we'll be visiting a company called, or a store, a, a business called The Fresh Food Factory. I met uh, the owner, Amanda Stevenson, at an event last year called uh, Black to the Future. I did an article on offbeatenpathdc.com about those businesses and she is amongst those businesses. So today hopefully we're going to go inside, meet Amanda and she can tell us a little about our story. Okay, family, I'm here. I'm here on Good Hope Road, right across the street from the Anacostia Art Center. You really can't see it that well because the tree is blocking it. But, you know, people who know the area, you recognize it for sure, right? So, we're about to walk in, and uh, this is where the Fresh Food Factory is located. Kind of a bit of a mall. You'll see as we, as we do a walk-in. Right now, I'm also waiting for Amanda Stevenson. That's the owner of it. So, we're going to hopefully get, down, get a chance to sit down and talk to her. Doing a little story on my YouTube channel. Well, I'm doing a little story. For this. Oh, okay. I'm gonna give you my time before I leave. Okay. Alright. So they also have a bookstore family.
Okay, family, I'm inside the store of the Fresh Food Factory, and I want to introduce the owner. Yes, <laughs> I would like to welcome everybody to the Fresh Food Factory's market. We open our doors here to better serve the community, May 2019. And I understand the power of food. I think my food journey started at a young age, um, knowing the importance of it, knowing the power of it, and all the change, the possibilities, the opportunities, and access that could be won through food. I grew up on a farm in a small town in Virginia. And at my age of 10, my father was given a terminal prognosis. He was given six months to a year to live. He had terminal uh, cancer. So he didn't subscribe to that. He said that that wouldn't be his end, how the doctor told him, and that was between him and his maker. So he matched that faith with changing lifestyle. So he changed his diet. He also changed his routine as it relates to fitness and his regimen and I, his prayer life and all that connectivity. All of that plays a great role in our success and us thriving in life. And, you know, I had my own bouts with food, whether it led to my uh, demise for a bit, and then I gained more knowledge and insight, and I was able to win those things that were happening to me as it related to eating poorly. So um, coming to uh, DC and, and now rooted in Anacostia, I saw a lot of residents had same or similar issues that my father had with food, whether it was cancer, diabetes, um, issues with gout, heart issues, whatever you could think of. Most of that is food related ailments or diseases that you um, would experience. So. Um, these people suffer from messaging, not having enough information in the message to say that you can survive beyond this, there's life beyond this, or you can overcome this. Don't take these, take these foods. So um, that information wasn't really here. And to add to that, we didn't have access. So um, I know for my family and for a lot of families, um, each of the Anacostia River, we would get together with meat, people grow, people have conversations, but we all have to travel outside of our immediate communities to get the access. So we felt like immigrants, and so many people feel like immigrants, they have to leave this immediate area for food and economic refuge. So that shouldn't be our story. So I wanted to be the change that I wanted to see and create opportunity for people to gain uh, more incomes and more revenues. And I say that because the Fresh Food Factory's market is an incubator market. So we hire people and we have members and we uh, help to grow those brands so they could then generate more sales and that employs more people of the community that keeps the fresh healthy local food made right here in our communities and a lot of uh, these foods are ethnically influenced and infused. We have people from Africa and the diaspora and some right here from Southeast selling their products right here in our store. So we see this as a win-win. We are actually building the food economy and um, we are building the health of the community. So we're impacting the wealth and health of the community. And I think um, governments, I know people should um, support more initiatives like this because the heart is in the right place. We're literally in the right place. We're of the community. We have a direct buy-in instead of somebody else coming in and saying, hey, this is what the community needs, or I'm not even gonna come to the community because um, they don't have enough disposable income to support a venture like this. I've heard all of that in wanting to start uh, the Fresh Food Factories Market or your community only wants chicken and greens. I'm like, yes, and we want all of these other things. So I didn't garner a lot of supports initially that I wanted, so it was bootstrapping for me, but it's paying out and paying off, and a lot of people come asking for information, come to workshops, getting the foods that we have. We have the ashwagandha, we have the sea moss, we have the spirulina, the maca, whatever you could think of. Most of that we have, and the rest of the stuff is on our list to get as we expand. That's what's, good. That's what's up. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, you said you've been in business since 2019. Yes. Wow, so someone like me, who I can use some training, I, I, I wanna change my diet, I wanna change the way I eat. And if I walk into the store and I just look around at all the wonderful, I I have no idea how to pick or how to change how to change that for myself. Do you guys offer any kind of? Um, I heard you say workshops. Yeah, we do. 
we offer workshops as it relate to workforce and entrepreneurship, but food uh, education, because we understand the need for food security, knowing where foods are sourced from, knowing how to prepare those foods, knowing yeah. how to grow those foods, That's knowing right. how they taste. So we do demos and tastings. But like you're saying, if you were to come here and say, I have issue with heart Relate, or well, I have heart related issues, so I could just say, okay, where if you're going for beverage, look for something as it relates to the color that we associate the heart with red, like beets, um, cherries. Um, not only are they good for the heart, or like pomegranate juice, yeah, yeah. Um, they're also good to help you detox, um, and also the greens. And spirulina is kind of like um, a sea plant, like sea moss, and um, that's great for protein as well. So there are a lot of different things that we could use if you're having a lot of pain. That's usually a sign that there's inflammation in the body. So turmeric is a great element for that. If you're having issues with sleeping, we have maca, we have um, melatonin, um, we have um, GABA. We also have mushroom, like reishi mushroom. That's another great example um, that will help you if you're having issues of stress, anxiety, um, whatever it may be, regulating your sleep cycle. All those things are actually great for that. Did you have any other questions? No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. You, it sounds like you could go. You, it sounds like you could do the workshop. Yeah, so you're you're much more than the owner. Like you, you live it. I have to. I had to learn it because I had yeah. issues, and I wasn't sure what was going on. And I'm going to hospital, chest X-rays, blood work, this, that, and the other. And they couldn't tell me what was going on. But here, take this steroid, but you'll be yeah. on it for the rest of your life. Yeah. No, I don't want to do that. You can't tell me what's wrong with me, but you're going to give me something that's not really going to address the issue directly you haven't identified it so yeah. why am I you know gonna subscribe to that so um, I went to someone that um, looks at you know food as a cure and I mm -hmm. had to start my journey that way and they were saying okay things like sugar and gluten you need to actually take out of your diet and since I've been doing that I've definitely seen a lot of change and you know issue that I was having and it made my waist a lot smaller when you get those uh, things out of your system as well so hey if you, if you, if you want to you know get it tight get it right take those carbs out um, you only need um, the carbs that are going to be beneficial for you and also too um, another thing as it relates to flour, because um, a lot of things are laced with gluten, flour, sugar, whatever. Teff flour is an ancient grain from Africa, and teff is something that you can find here. And if you are sensitive to gluten or whatever it may be, if you have a stomach issue, that's usually a sign uh, from dairy or um, like a carb or something, try to cut back in sugar, cut back on those things first because a lot of the carbs break down the sugar. You know, so okay. we need to cut those out of our diet first and see what happens. And, you know, go to your doctor, see what they say, too. I'm not going to say that is your problem, but I am going to say that's the root to a lot of problems that that's we've had. Right. That's right. And also, like, stress, you know, all of that could, you know, create ulcers, stomach pain, a lot of different issues. So we have a lot of different products in here. We could walk around, talk about them. When you come in, we could talk to you about them. Or if you have a question, you know, send it online or look up certain products. What can I use for this? And then we may have those products here. And that's another good start. I had um, people to say, you know, I had issues with fertility. You know, um, I lost my first and, you know, making sure your womb is healthy is really important. Mm -hmm. And we do have, you know, um, products that will um, help prepare the womb for birth. That's a um, specialty, but that's still something that we try to uh, look at on a natural spectrum first. Um, and there are a lot of different things. And it's about detoxing and replenishing your body with what it needs. It's about cell rejuvenation. Sea moss is a, a great product to actually use for that as well. Cell rejuvenation it has 92% of the minerals that your body naturally needs. So um, a lot of great things. Wow, this is awesome. So what kind of hours do you keep for people who want to come visit you? Because personally, I didn't know until the Black, uh, what was it, a Black to the Future event yes. last year that there were businesses in here. There's a, there is a, a bookstore, there is a chiropractor, there's a, 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 health, a health food restaurant, yes. right? Um, down the hall, I and mean, then you guys. So 
how would people know what office hours you keep or what when the store, sure. store hours you keep? So for right now it's 12 to 5, no okay. to 5. Okay. And this is still, you know, COVID hours, make sure everybody's safe and everything is sanitized from Tuesday through Sunday. On Monday is the day that the art center rests, but we are still in motion. We have one of our great team members, Calvin, who um, makes sure that we don't waste food. This is Calvin over here, family. <laughs> there he is, the man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He um, manages the effort to make sure we don't waste food. So we give food away and we also pick food up along the food chain. So whether that's from growers, different purveyors, whether that's from growers, grocery stores, but all of them have the same mission and vision is to put out superior food products. So food is great, but superior food is what we need to ingest, especially through times like this. If we're looking for immunity boost, if we're looking to That's make right. sure we stay here, it's not about just getting full, it's about making sure that we have something of substance that we could actually use to prolong life. That's what it's about. So on Mondays is a, a food distribution. We do that every Monday. We've been doing that pretty much since we opened, I think, um, a couple months after we opened, July 2019, we started our uh, first food distribution effort. So it was every week since we've been going strong. And, and when I, is that? When is that food distribution? Every Monday, but we have distributors to come in and give it out to different places to limit the touches. Okay, so, gotcha, um, gotcha. that's pretty much how we're doing it. But prior to COVID, people were in the lobby, lined up, ready to go, and we had a plethora of <laughs> I like that word, plethora. Like for the word. them. So, <laughs> but it, and, and it's all good because we know, like, people don't, uh, some people may not have the incomes or they may not be able to get the subsidies or supports that they need to go beyond the month to feed their families. And sometimes better foods have higher price tags. So Do you accept wanna, EBT? We accept EBT, okay. we accept Apple Pay. We can't wait till the smaller grocery stores could accept EBT online. <laughs> there are a lot of different things that okay. you know that help out the small business and help out the community and that wealth could be spread for everybody to um, be successful. So we have no problem with the, the $15 an hour <laughs> and, and payment beyond $15 and just making sure that we have enough revenues. Again, we're at the mercy of the market. So That's I, right. I, you know, a lot of small <laughs> businesses um, don't have the same, or my, uh, micro businesses don't have the same uh, benefits as, you know, the bigger, larger entities because they get tips, grants, um, all these other supports that they're given, and they're not directly at the mercy of the market. The market is one end of their revenues and right. incomes that they have, but they get all this other support. So, you know, that distribution needs to happen for everybody uh, to have an equitable outcome, better outcomes. Um, but um, we're here. We okay. love the community. And whether I'm here or um, someone else is teaching, we're doing some training this summer um, for a specialized group. And we do um, smaller um, training cohorts or larger ones. It all, de um, it all depends. And how can they find you? Uh, is it the, the Food Factory? The Fresh, Fresh Food Factory dot com, yes, right? Yes, our website is thefreshfoodfactory.com. Okay, cool, And if cool. you're in D.C., you can go to Near Dot Delivery if you want food delivered to you. And if you want to see some advocacy work, uh, we just um, launched an um, a advocacy series. It was a documentary series. It was a um, oh. call to action, call and response documentary, and it aired on YouTube and also Facebook last week. So, um, how can I find it on YouTube? You, you say, like, what do I search? What is it called? Um, YouTube, The Fresh Food Factory. Okay. And it was entitled okay. Feed Ward 8. So, it's a, a four, oh, oh, feed um, four episode series, Feed Ward 8. So, we talked about food mood, and a lot of people haven't really heard of that, but food impacts our mood, whether good or bad. <laughs> you know, just beyond, you know, yeah. you know, what we eat, we may feel sluggish. But if we look at criminality, you have to look at that and say, um, generationally what has been in our community what have we been eating on and your parents and your grandparents and what you're eating on how is that altering your DNA and changing the outcomes for your children so wow. whether it's health whether it's how they're responding to food and it's been out there this is not Amanda Stevenson talking this is <laughs> a message sent through her right now That's but right. we could actually google that we could yeah. actually search that. That's fact, you know. Okay. So we could just, you know, so I want to, again, change for the community 
and we had a lot of people in the community talking about change, talking about these things. Food is medicine, and food is medicine. Does that mean food is a drug? Um, we were talking about um, food is culturally appropriate and the price of health. You yeah. know, I think they were the four titles of the episodes that um, went out, but we're going to be doing more about the wealth gap, okay. housing, different health disparities in our community we're going to be addressing, and we got the support of LISC and the DC Humanities and some others. So um, we're going wow. to be continuing to get community youth and seniors involved and engaged in that. And that's pretty much how we, we learn is, is nothing that's pre-scripted um, as far as people's experiences. These are real people in your community you may know, may see, but they could tell you, hey, you know what? My father's land was taken away um, through eminent domain. So that's pretty much why I can't leave legacy for my family. And people are looking at us like, okay, well, why can't you make it? We were on the pathway to make it until yeah. They had to take it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, so that that's a, a direct setup and that leads to more disparities in the community. People don't know what their housing situation looked like. They may get depressed and may whatever and then what do they start eating? Well, people start eating to take care of issue of depression. Or even anxiety. like drinking, like and alcohol, drinking, things like and that. Drugs right. yeah, and drugs or whatever. Right, we can't right. talk about one without talking about yeah. the other. Yeah. And there's a great article on offbeatingpathdc.com. Mm -hmm. It's a three-part series I did called Impactful Decisions. You know, I kind of went back to um, like when Good Hope was a village, like in yes. the 1800s when we did have homes and, yes. and before Suitland Parkway and before 295 and how our neighborhoods was. So there, there's a story that led to the dysfunction is here east of the river now. Yeah. You know what and I mean? And, and it needs to be all over, mm -hmm. all over, all over, all over. So thank you for coming to War Egg. We really need you. Yeah. <laughs> we really need you because this is, like they say, it's a food food desert, so to speak. Um, they're opening up or something on Benning Road now, some kind of food hall, which which is good to see. Mm -hmm. That's east of the Anacostia River. So things are starting to develus. We have a we have mm -hmm. busboy and poet food because we don't have any sit down restaurants. Yeah. I mean, we, it's not that we don't have any, but we lack those two. Yeah. And so. I, I like the fact that is a shift happening and the people who are operating own and control some of these establishments and or the edifice the building are minoritized mm -hmm. individuals or people of a, a minoritized people group they're black women men or hispanic or whomever so um these groups of people being in position again is pretty much what we need for equity i definitely like people working at the cash register people working on construction jobs who are black or latino or whatever it may be but i really like it when they're in the boardroom when they own and are decision makers so ownership is really key whether that's business ownership home ownership commercial operation ownership stock ownership whatever it may be <laughs> that's how we create that shift leave a legacy every day and leave something to our families to come and you oh, all shit. thought this was just about a grocery store. It's beyond a <laughs> See, grocery and store. I it and I can I can listen to her, and I know y'all can listen to her all day because she's a wealth of information. But you got to come in and see her. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna see. we're gonna close because I know you I know you're really busy. You're just getting in, and you got to get you know do some things. So thank you for your time. I hope you got a lot out of that. I know I did. Be sure to be heard in the comments. And there's no telling where we're going to end up next. If you want to ride, just click on subscribe.